Slaver's Bay is the name of a body of water in south central Essos, but also the surrounding land area. This is where Daenerys spent a few seasons learning how to be a ruler. It was her goal to abolish slavery from this region, something these cities were built off of. It's so ingrained in this society that it's referred to as the Slaver Cities. It's located right next to the ruins of Valyria and south of the Dothraki Sea. Daenerys spent time in each of the three Slaver Cities, and usually only three locations aren't enough to delve into for one of these type of videos, but this region was very different in the past. These cities were built by the old empire of Geese thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, they were the world's most powerful civilization. The capital city, Geese, was just east of the Gulf of Grief. It's one of the oldest cities in this story's history and was founded by Grazdan the Great. He also supposedly founded the Lockstep Legions. They were the Giscari army that allowed the old empire to become so powerful. The Lockstep Legion was nearly invincible. And their fighting style is what inspired the Unsullied Slave Army. Except the Lockstep Legion was made up of free men. Their discipline and fighting capabilities made conquering the surrounding areas possible. Up until the Valyrians discovered dragons in their volcanoes and learned to tame them 5,000 years ago. After five Giscari Wars, where they lost each time, the old empire of Geese was destroyed and their culture was almost entirely wiped out of history. The Lockstep Legion couldn't do much against dragons. The Valyrians took notes from the Giscari and enslaved the defeated people, just like how the old empire was operating. Dragonfire turned everything to ash. The Valyrians also salted the fields so nothing could grow here ever again. All of the old empire's colonies were taken by the Valyrians. It wouldn't be until the doom of Valyria 4,500 years later for the Giscari descendants to be free from the dragon lords. They took back control of the slaver cities, but after their loss of culture, they still speak High Valyrian. The only remnants of the past are their brick towers, pyramids, and their symbol of a harpy. They now call themselves the Sons of the Harpy. Just north of Giscar is Astapor, the Red City. It gets that name since everything here is made with red bricks. The saying goes, bricks and blood built Astapor, and bricks and blood her people. It was the blood of slaves that constructed everything. The buildings are old and falling apart however, causing red dust to be floating around this port city. There are fighting pits here and plazas to view and purchase slaves. New slaves, usually provided by the Dothraki, are brought into the plaza of punishment. If they are bought, they are taken to the plaza of pride. But what Astapor is known for are the Unsullied, possibly the greatest army in the series. How the Unsullied are trained is pretty dark. When a child slave seems to have promising physical strength and speed, he is taken to participate in the torturous training. At 5 years old, they are castrated, which means they'll never be as strong as a guy with all his testosterone but it doesn't seem to affect their capabilities on the battlefield because of their discipline and strong will. Their running and climbing training goes from dusk till dawn, and if they're unable to keep up, they are killed. Only one in three survive the training, designed to make them obedient, expert fighters without emotion. One of these tests to becoming an unsullied slave soldier is raising a puppy for a year, and after that year, they're instructed to kill their pet dog. If they don't kill their dog like instructed, they are killed and fed to all the other dogs that were spared. Their most grim test is their final rite of passage. They are ordered to go to the slave market and purchase a newborn. They are then to kill the newborn slave right in front of its mother and only then are they awarded their iconic spiked helms. Every day, they randomly select a demeaning name for themselves. All unsolid boys are given new names when they are cut. Grey Worm. Red flea, black rat. Names that remind them what they are. Vermin. In each meal, they drink something called the wine of courage. The more they drink, the less pain they feel. The slave masters in Astapor are referred to as the good masters, and they sell unsullied in large numbers to avoid them mingling with others and forgetting what they are. Interestingly enough, the unsullied themselves have their own secret religion amongst themselves. The Giscari still worship the same gods the old empire did, but the Unsullied pray to something else entirely. People call their goddess the Lady of Spear, or the Bride of Battle, or the Mother of Hosts. But the Unsullied keep her true name a secret. Only those who have had their manhood cut and burned at her altar know this goddess's real name. In their religion, they bathe in sea salt as a way of purifying themselves. The people of Astapor still carry the features of the Giscari, who they descend from. They have the same amber skin tone, facial features, and the same distinctive red-black hair. Warriors of noble birth also continue the tradition of styling their hair with wax into shapes like wings. The other slaver cities also do similar things with their hair. We don't see much of Astapor in Game of Thrones, outside of Daenerys purchasing all 8,000 Unsullied and killing some good masters. 
Satida. Satida. This is done. Go back, Gavi. Axios in das, Mentios in das. Giloni pilos lue vale, Torbios in a das. Ininini a trica das. Dracaris. The last we hear from the city in the books, it's a complete mess. A hell on this planet. There are dead bodies everywhere and a deadly plague is spreading because of it. So the city has been closed off, leaving the people here to starve over be killed. The next slaver city Danny tried to liberate was Yonkai, north of Astapor. Yonkai is the yellow city and the ruling slavers are called the wise masters as opposed to the red city having good masters. Everything here is made with yellow bricks. They become known for selling bed slaves. From a young age, slaves are taught the 7 sighs and 16 seats of pleasure, and I have no idea what that even means. Yonkai doesn't have the best reputation, and not because of all the money from sex slave trafficking. The wise masters are known to be pretty corrupt. Yonkai is briefly in Game of Thrones. This is where Danny meets Dario Naharis in Season 3. The Yunkish are paying them well. You know these men? Allow me to present the captains of the Second Sons. Miro Bravos. Prendal Negezen and um, Dario Naharis. He was a sellsword who betrayed the wise masters who hired him after hearing what Daenerys did to Astapor. A little further north is Marine. It's the largest and most powerful of the three slaver cities. It's bigger than both the other cities combined. Everything here is also made of brick, but not of one specific color. Marine doesn't have a nickname like the red or yellow city since there are different colored bricks wherever you look. The defenses here are also stronger, with the walls being thicker and taller and not falling apart. This slaver city is ruled by people who call themselves the Great Masters. The place is known for its many fighting pits and pyramids, with one of the many pyramids standing 800 feet tall. This one's called the Great Pyramid, and has the Giscari symbol of a harpy on top of it. This huge structure is where Daenerys resides during her stay in Marine. Deep within the Great Pyramid is a 40 foot deep pit that was used as a prison. Daenerys uses it as a dragon pit to chain up Rhaegal and Viserion after a little girl is killed by her dragon Drogon. He came from the sky. Yasobra. The black one. When she knows the winged shadow. A dragon pit was also constructed in King's Landing to house the Targaryen's dragons a couple hundred years before the start of the series. It would eventually turn to ruin, but while keeping dragons locked away, they don't grow as large as they would if they were free. When in the wild, flying around and constantly hunting, they will never stop growing and live a very long life, up to 200 years old. Some of the more ancient noble families that trace their lineage back to the old empire have their own colors that represent their family, kind of like how the houses in the Seven Kingdoms have sigils. Their pyramids are made with bricks of their family's color, and they dress in that same color as well. Connecting all three of the slaver cities is the old Gaskari coastal road, and somewhere in between Yonkai and Astapor is a location called the Horns of Hazat. It's not really clear what this place is, since it's just briefly mentioned as a location where a battle between the two slaver cities took place recently in the books. But judging by its name, I would guess a mountain range or a hill region. The river that flows into Slaver's Bay through Marine is the Skahazadon River. This city's waste is poured into its waters. A position called the Warden of the River is appointed to someone in Marine to watch over it. In the Sandstone Mountain Range, right by Marine, is a passage called the Kaizai Pass. This passage connects Marine to a small region in the east called Lazar. Like Slaver's Bay, this area has only three cities that I may as well include in this video since I'll probably not talk about Lazar ever again. North of Slaver's Bay are four old Giscari colonies that are considered to be within the Dothraki grasslands now. After the doom of Valyria, chaos fell over all of Essos, and the Dothraki grew very powerful and feared now that dragons were no longer around. All four cities were turned to ruin by the Dothraki. All four cities were turned to ruin by the Dothraki raids and given new degrading names. Hasdan Mo, a former slave market, is now known as Vaz Dief, which means the city of skulls in Dothraki. Gardak has since been renamed Krasaj Haz, meaning sharp mountains, after the ruined city's pyramids. We don't know Vasmaja's original Giscari name, but his new name in Dothraki means the city of whores. We also don't know Vazifi's old name, but it means the city of shackles. Within the actual body of water called Slaver's Bay, there are a few islands. Right off the coast is an island called Yaros. Illyria, even though it was founded and a part of the Valyrian Freehold, it's also an island within Slaver's Bay. It was lucky enough to survive the doom of Valyria. The same can't be said about the Isle of Cedars. Tsunamis caused by the doom destroyed the two cities on the large island. Gozai was in the north and Velos was in the south. 
It's in both Slaver's Bay and the Gulf of Grief. Gain is that large island within the Gulf, but we don't know anything about it. The small island just below it is New Geese. It's the newest of all the Giscari cities, and it seems like the people here are trying to recreate old geese. The port city's economy depends on slave trade, like the old empire, and they have an army inspired by the Lockstep legions. They call their fighters the Iron Legions in New Geese, and are free men just like the Lockstep legions of the past, unlike the Unsullied of Astapor who are just slaves. This city must have been developed sometime after the Giscari Wars with Valyria 5,000 years ago, but exactly when hasn't been stated. I do talk about Slaver's Bay a little in my Valyria map video, but I think this region did deserve some more time and effort to delve into, so I hope it was somewhat entertaining. Thanks for watching guys.